Hey kids, welcome to Unit 5, Lesson 9, Finding Duplicates, Exercise Number 1. A DJ stores the playlist that they use at various events in a 2D array, where each row represents a unique event and contains the songs in order that they were played at that specific event. In playlist.java, we're going to write a method find duplicates. Bye bye. I think we have a spelling error there. Implementing the algorithm you developed on the finding duplicates activity guide. Return true if current row contains duplicate values. If the row does not contain duplicate values, return false. Then we're going to write the method event has duplicates by implementing the algorithm we developed on the finding duplicates activity guide. We're going to return true if any rows contain duplicate values. If none, we're going to return false. Finally, we're going to call the event has duplicates method and print the results. Well, this isn't as bad as it seems. We've actually already done this lesson and you probably don't remember. Think back to unit three, lesson 10. Remember the finding duplicates? This is almost the same lesson. Remember how we even talked during this lesson? It's kind of odd that we were doing nested for statements when we really haven't learned about them. We've learned about them. Now we're going to revisit that same algorithm. This lesson, mostly a review then. Let's take a look at our code. We have our songs and each row represents a unique date that they played. We're instantiating a new object, my playlist from the playlist class. We're passing along this 2D array. Under playlist, we have our 2D array. We have our constructor, a place to write the finding duplicates method, and a place to write the event has duplicates method. There's a worksheet that goes along with this. Let's head over there and we can talk about this algorithm we have to write. Over on this worksheet, let's head down here to the second page. What we have to do is loop through those three rows and see if there are any duplicate songs. We did that back in unit three, lesson 10. Remember finding duplicate fees? Remember to find a duplicate in a row, we had to offset it by one because we don't want to search itself. We want to search each other one in the row. We increase by one and each element checks against the rest of the row. And you're thinking, well, Mr. Rhodes, that's only one row. And you're right, that is. The new twist we're going to learn here is we're going to write another algorithm that's going to repeat that code no matter how many different rows we have. So there's going to be two algorithms. One, we're going to write that is going to search through a single row, compare the elements to see if there's any duplicates. That one we've already written, so we know that one. Our second one, though, is going to be, does any of the array have any duplicates? And you're thinking, woo, that sounds pretty difficult. But all we're really going to do is run the same algorithm just on all of the rows individually. That means after we figure out our first algorithm, we just have to increase the rows in our second algorithm. And I'll check to see if we have any duplicates. The other big thing here that's going to be different from our older algorithm that used numbers, the equal equals method. This time we're testing for a string. That means we have to use the dot equals method. Keep that in mind. Let's head back to our first method and answer the questions. Question one, how many loops will we need to accomplish our goal? We're going to need two, one for the current row, one for the next. Where will you start and stop your loops? Well, loop number one, we're going to start at zero and then we're going to end where the current row length ends. And we want to go minus one. So we're starting at zero. So we want to match our index. 
That's our first row, standard row. The next one, loop number two, we're going to start at whatever the current position is, but we want to go over one. We want to check everything to the right of it. And then we're going to end at the current row dot length. Let's head to the next question. What is the condition we're checking for as we traverse? Well, last time we checked if whatever the current row index we're at equal equals the current row index of the next row. This time we just need to use the dot equals method instead of equal equals. What's that look like? Well, if the current row and that's at our first index, if that equals the next row, so current row, but this time we want that next index or the one over. And if they do, we want to return true. If not, we're going to return false. Should you turn true after checking all the values in an array or as soon as a duplicate is found? I think it is more efficient to return true right away. Now we're going to take this idea here and we're going to write some pseudocode. What is our method called again? It is called find duplicates. We're going to loop through all the elements first. Then we're going to loop through all the elements, but this time to the right of the current. If current equals next, then we're going to return true. If not, we're going to return false. And I think that's our pseudocode to write our method. So we should probably spell it right here like that. This is going to loop through the row and check and see if there's any duplicates. But that just handles one row. How do we get to the next one? Let's head to the next question and see if we can't figure that out. Now that we have our row checker, all we have to do is increment up each row and run that algorithm. How many loops are we going to need to accomplish this goal? I think only one to check each row. Run the method, increase by one, run the method, increase by one, run the method, increase by one for the length of the array. Let's go to the next question. How does finding duplicates method simplify our code? Well, now that we have find duplicates, we can figure out if each individual row has true or not. Now all we have to do is check each row. So we don't have to rewrite any code. You can rely on the find duplicates method to return true if the row contains duplicates. That way you can just use it to check each row. You don't have to rewrite any code. No spelling error there. That means with our method we already have written, we don't have to change the code. We just have to run that same method over and over. And that's much more efficient. Let's go to our last question. Will this method return true if there are duplicate values present in different rows? No, this method will only return true if the duplicate values appear in the same row. And our spelling is excellent as always, kids. Now that we understand what we're doing, let's write some pseudocode. Event has duplicates is our method. 
we're going to loop through all rows. Then if find duplicates for that row, we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. That's our pseudocode for our two algorithms. Let's head over to code.org and translate this into something functional. Back here at playlist, we have to write that finding duplicates method. How are we going to do that? First, we have to write our loops. We're going to say for. This is our outer loop. And this time we are going to search through the row and we're going to start at zero. So our current row starts at index zero, as long as the current row is less than, and if you look up here, we're going through the current row length. We're just looping through whatever the user sends us. So the current row dot length, as long as we're under that, we're going to keep going through the array. That's our outer. Now we have to do our inner. This is going to be our inner loop. Now we just want to check the number next to it. And we'll just call this next. And next equal, we want whatever current is plus one. That's it. Now next has to be less than the current row dot length. And as long as we're less than that, we're going to go through the row and that's looping through. Now we have to determine if we find something. This is going to be our if statement. And if wherever we're at in the current row and we want to get the current position, if that equals wherever we're at in the next position. So current row, and this time we want the next position. So the one right next to it. If it does, we're going to return true. If not, we're going to return false. Let's clean up our code a little. This is our end of method. What we have here is a loop. We are going to take whatever the current values are. And that's going to be one part of our 2D array. And then we're going to go over one position from that index and then check the value against everything else in that row. If there's a duplicate, we'll return true. If not, it's false. Well, this is just one row. How do we get through multiple rows? That's where we have to go down to our event has duplicate. And we still need a loop. So let's do a four. This is going to be our for loop. And we want to loop through how many rows we have. So int row equals zero, as long as row is less than, what list are we ultimately looking through? Well, if you look up here, it's the event playlist. So we want to see that we are underneath the length of the event playlists dot length. Check the spelling there in a minute. As long as we are underneath that, we are going to go up through the rows. That's just going to loop through our rows. Now we want to run the find duplicates method. And we need an if statement. This will be our if statement. And if the find duplicates method from above finds a duplicate at the event 
play lists row we're at, then we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. This method here is taking our array from our my console and each row is getting inputted and we're checking each row against the find duplicates method. If there's a duplicate in that row, return true, if not false. Remember, this is not checking rows against rows, only what's within the row. Let's check some spelling here. That looks like that's spelled right. Find duplicates looks like it's spelled right. Current next all looks good. Looks like we have all of our semicolons and curly cues in the right spot. Let's head over to my console and finish this up. We have to call the my duplicates method. That means we need a print statement. And we're going to say an event has duplicates. And we're going to concatenate and we have to run the my playlist event has duplicates method that we just created. Check our spelling there. That looks pretty good. When I hit run, we should get true to print off because in our first array here, we have wake me up in two different spots. Same with ode to code and born this way in our third row. Let's hit run and see if our code works. An event duplicate has been found. So it looks like our code's working pretty good. Key takeaway is building off of our unit three lesson 10. In that lesson, we learned how to search through an array to find a duplicate. And we did that by just shifting the array over by one and checking each number against the rest of the row. On this lesson, we build on that idea. Instead of only being able to do one row, now we can do multiple rows. And this is a very important piece of code. And the chances of you seeing this on the FRQ exam are pretty good. So I would definitely take the time and make sure you are memorizing both of these pieces of code. Hopefully this video helped you understand how to use that code and find duplicates. As always, kids, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next lesson. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.